Hey guys, this is Drea from Dreamy App Games, and I'm going to be reviewing Paranormal Asylum, another paranormal escape room game. The purpose of this game is to get eight creepy dolls that the ghosts are leaving around the abandoned asylum and escape before the evil ghost catches you and ends the game. Let's play, and then I'll be back with commentary. <laughs>
Okay, I am back with commentary. Now, usually I'll do my commentary while I'm playing the game. I will, you know, show you what the game is like, give you my thoughts as we go along, and let you know what I'm thinking about the game and the gameplay. Unfortunately, I could not do that with this particular game because you could not adjust the volume of the music or the sound effects. Now, I usually have to adjust the volume of the music and the sound effects, or the mic is going to pick up the music and the sound effects, actually amplify them to make it louder than it really is and then you can't hear the commentary at all. So since this game did not allow me to do that, I just figured let's play the game, you can watch the game, and then we'll come back and talk about it, which is what we are doing right now. So now let me start with the positives about this game. And you know, there are a few positives. There's a few things that I do like. For one thing, I like the concept and I do like the graphics. While not on par with the previous game I reviewed, Eyes the Horror Story, 
story, it's still decent for an app game. And the jump scares are pretty fun the first few times because it comes literally out of nowhere. And that's uh, that's the reason, I think, that they don't allow you to adjust the volume for the game. For a jump scare to be successful, you have to be shocked both visually and have your audio senses shocked as well. A sudden image jumping out accompanied with a loud screech, scream, or crash, and it just like shocks you visually and audibly, and that's what makes a jump scare successful. So that's why I don't think that you could adjust the volume. So it is successful in that way as well. So the graphics are decent for an app game. Again, not the best I've seen, not the worst I've seen, but they, they're pretty good. And I do like the concept, the concept, you know, of walking through this abandoned assembly. In fact, you know what I would have liked? I would like, with that camera standing there, and then all you could see are the ghosts in the camera. You can't see them if you don't have the camera aimed up. You, you can't see them with your naked eye. This would actually be a pretty cool concept for a paranormal investigation game. Kind of like make you feel like you're a member of Ghost Hunters. That would be so cool that, you know, not, not like, you know, getting attacked by evil ghosts and things like that or trying to escape. Just going on a paranormal investigation and playing with all the tools that paranormal investigators play with and watching how they work and making it feel like you're really doing an investigation. That would be kind of neat. So I kind of like this concept because I think they're kind of leading into something even more. But um, and like I said, uh, I do like the jump scares. Let's face because even I who I don't get scared very easily. But when that jumped out and I wasn't expecting it, you know, I did get startled. So I yeah, thought that was kind of cool. That was entertaining. Now the negatives. The gameplay is far too frustrating. The controls are similar to Eyes the Horror Story, which was the only complaint I had when I reviewed the game. The only thing I didn't like was the controls because I thought the controls were a little awkward and a little clumsy. Uh, but this game actually makes me appreciate the other's game, the other game's uh, controls much better. The controls for this game are even more awkward, even more clumsy, and way too sensitive. Um, when I tried to gently move the camera to where I wanted it to move, it started moving all over the place, making it really hard to focus on where I wanted to go. And then when you walked, you were staggering around like someone who forgot to wear their glasses and is legally blind and you're just walking all over the place. Um, another frustration is that it seems relatively impossible to win. Uh, unlike other similar games in this style, there are no warnings that the ghost is approaching. Normally, you give a player a fighting chance by letting them know that danger is imminent and they have to run. In other games where they don't warn you, you can run past the ghost or even fight back to try to escape, although you take some damage to your character's health points. But they are not really doing any of that in this game. There's no warning that it's coming. There's no escaping. So how can you fight back against something that randomly pops out in front of you when you don't expect it? I started actually believing that this game was one big jump scare, similar to videos on Facebook where you think you're watching a video of a guy trying to catch a huge spider in Australia, of course, everything is bigger there. And when he misses, an animated spider jumps at the screen with a loud screaming noise that bursts your eardrums if you're wearing headphones with the volume up. And that's what I thought this was. I thought this was one big jump scare disguised as a game. I will say though, I did some research online and in all the videos of people playing this game and reviewing this game and in written reviews I found of this game all over the web, I did find one guy, just one, but there is that one guy in 2013 who seemingly won the game and was a little disappointed when all he got for his victory was an ad asking him to download the developer's other games. But it seems like it is winnable, at least in 2013 it was, but the gameplay could use a lot of work. If this was an actual game and not just a jump scare hiding as a game, then they need to make it much clearer. They need to warn the players that there is a ghost coming or at least give them a chance to attack it or try to outrun it so they feel like they have a fighting chance to escape and win. You can't just randomly have a ghost appear and then the game ends. If it just randomly appears and there's no warning, there's no way to escape it, then what's the point of playing? Because it seems then it would be impossible to win since you don't have a chance to escape because it literally could pop up anytime and it just makes it seem like there's no winning. So if this is a game, you got to make it seem like there's at least a fighting chance. I mean, granted, you don't want it to be easy, but you also don't want it to feel impossible. The controllers really need to be made less sensitive so you could actually move around more freely. Like I said, I never thought I'd say this, but I really do think that Eyes the Horror Story have far superior controls compared to this game. And like I said, in that game, I thought they were awkward and clumsy. 
Jersey. So that tells you just how bad I, I did not like the controls for this game. Otherwise, like I said, it is a really good starting concept. It kind of gives me ideas about other types of games they could create that would be interesting, like a ghost hunter game. Like, you know, you could be one of the ghost hunters or one of the paranormal adventure crew and you or uh, ghost adventures crew with Zach Bagans and things like that. And you can pretend to be one of those characters walking around and actually looking for paranormal activity and use all of the equipment like the K2 meter, the Mel meter, the camcorder. I mean, so it kind of makes me bounce off other ideas, which I think is cool when a game inspires other ideas. Um, and I also like the jump scares. And, and if you like that kind of a thing, you probably would like this game. And I also think it would be hilarious to send it to a friend who's easily startled. Um, but yeah, there is still some work to be done. Now, there is also a VR version of this game, a virtual reality version, and I think that would actually be pretty cool. However, according to the reviews, you need an Xbox 360 game controller in order to play. Now, personally, I think it would have been better suited to play like that because I think these games just would feel so much easier if you had a controller that you can control with both hands. And, you know, the way it's set up on the phone just to me just seems really awkward. Uh, but I don't have a 360 controller anymore. Um, so maybe I could find a cheap one and give it a try because I do have VR goggles. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll review that in the future. But with that, I leave you with this challenge. Can you be the second one to beat this game? Give it a try and let me know what happens in the comment below. Now, I would give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. There are some positives and there's some things to work on. But overall, it's really not that bad. And it does make for a good jump scare. So yeah, I think it's worth, you know, downloading and seeing what you can do. Anyway, guys, this is Drea from Dreamy App Games, and I will see you at the next review. So until then, take care. And don't forget, if you have a game that you would like me to review, leave it in the comment section below. I will look it up and see what I can do about playing it and letting you know what I think. And so, and if you've played this game and have one, let me know. Better yet, record yourself playing and winning and then post the link to your YouTube video in the comment section below, and maybe we'll discuss it. Anyway, until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon.